What is blurring the line? It's where a person makes it difficult to see the exact truth about something. And in this case, I'm talking about homelessness. It's seeing something right in front of you and not acknowledging the true oppressive state that it really is. There was a time you could tell when a person was homeless. Maybe they appeared unclean, looked unclean, clothes disheveled, maybe their hair, their facial appearance, Maybe there was a smell, and you said to yourself, that person's homeless. Maybe you could tell they didn't have a bath taken that day or for several days. But that's all changed. Yes, many appear described because we are conditioned to believe that because that's all we see on the television, that's all we see on the news, that's what's brought before us. But the face of homelessness is changing. It's becoming harder and harder to recognize. Homelessness is no longer limited to just simply living on the street or on the sidewalk or in a makeshift tent or staying in a shelter. Maybe it's seeing that student or that same person you pass by in the library day in, day out, same time every day. But they appear to be aimlessly walking with no direction. Or maybe it's that person that you see when you're walking downtown that you happen to see every day, the same time, but maybe it's different. They're wearing similar clothes, but yet still appear to be walking aimlessly with no place to go. Homelessness is unstable and unhealthy living conditions, going from place to place, sometimes making a decision between, do I purchase food today for my family, or do I pay car insurance? Do I pay the rent or the mortgage, or do I purchase clothing for the children to attend school? Or even worse, staying in an abusive and toxic situation just so that you can have a roof over your head, or simply a permanent address for your child to attend school. I know that all too well, and here's my story. My mom and I, we were homeless. By definition of living from place to place, see, we were trying to avoid toxic family members who showed their love through mental and physical abuse. It wasn't conducive for us at all. And because that toxic and abusive love they tried to show, we had to move from place to place to place. Yes, I had clothes from the consignment shop. My mother purchased them, she washed them, she pressed them, and I looked really good going to school. Yeah, I had food. But at the same time, as I got older and started counting the food, because many of our meals consisted of hot dogs, I realized that my mom was not eating because there appeared to be more in the pack than there really should have been. And I'll never know how she did it. She worked three jobs just to get me through as a single parent. I never felt homeless. I was never uncared for. I was never unclean. So by society standards, I wasn't homeless because I didn't look the part. But in all honesty, we were. As I grew older, my sympathetic fondness grew for the homeless and the less fortunate community. And to this day, I engage and I feed them. And by the end of this talk, I will show you how to do the exact same. But first, let me share some of the testimonials of the individuals that I've met. In assisting the unhoused and less fortunate, I've met tons of people and countless testimonies of survival and why they were not living in a permanent address, why they either were sleeping on the street or why they were running 
from a toxic situation that I was very familiar with. I met a married Caucasian lady in her 40s. She decided she could no longer tolerate her spouse mentally and physically abusing her and their children. And so she said, I have to go. But where do I go? He alienated her from her family and friends so that she had no support system. When social services came, everybody was fine. They smiled. They looked the part. They explained the bruises. Oh, the girls was playing too rough. Oh, I fell down. Oh, it was just this. It was that. It was always an excuse. So they passed. So she finally said, I have to go, and she did. She lived from shelter from shelter, place to place, and finally ended up homeless on the street with her children because they were safer on the street than they were in her household. She said to them, we don't ever want to be separated, so we can't tell people what's really going on. I met a divorced Caucasian woman in her 30s whose son was murdered in their hallway. <laughs> she says, I just had to get that one item for dinner. So her and her son were making dinner, and she said to him, don't answer the door. The same thing all parents tell their children, right? Don't answer the door for anyone. I'm going to be right across the street. Just get this one item. She goes across the street, but as she's Getting to that process, she walks down the stairs, and she passes this male stranger and had this pit in her stomach, an uneasiness. But she just chalked it off as, don't be paranoid. She comes back with the one item for dinner as she's making her way up the stairwell. Before she even reaches the top, she notices her door is ajar. She starts climbing those stairs so quickly. And to her dismay, she sees her son lying in the hallway, dead. She says, why should I be on this earth when my son can no longer be here? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to carry my treasures with me. I'm going to carry his favorite book, his teddy bear, and my shopping cart. I'm going to carry my favorite coat because these were our treasures. If he can't live here comfortably, neither should I. That's why she was living on the street. To this day, it is still a cold case. What about the African-American pregnant teen that I met? She fell in love, just like we all do, right? We meet someone, we fall in love, but he showed his love through physical abuse. He couldn't keep his hands to himself. Her family said, you can stay, so can the baby, but he can't come around. She chose him. He chose someone else. She ended up on the street because she felt she had no options, nowhere to go. The stories and testimonials that I shared with you, the mothers, the teens, these women were clean. They did not look homeless. They were well-dressed, and I never would have guessed that they were homeless when they stood in my food line. But regardless of the testimonies, again, homelessness has no face. A newborn, an infant, a toddler, a child, a preteen, a teenager. I'm trying to unblur the TV's image in your mind and replace it with reality. It can be a young adult, a senior citizen, male or female, rich or well-to-do, it does not matter. Please do not fool yourself and think N-I-M-B-Y, not in my backyard. This can't happen to me or my family. Please do not bury your head in the sand because it can happen to you and it can happen in this city. In February of 2022, the county's board of commissioners said the county is facing homelessness at a large crisis. They helped 1,000 households, but there were still 1,700 people on the waiting list looking for assistance. The Daily News said homelessness looks much different 
than what most people have in mind. It's people no longer sleeping on the street, but sleeping on couches, temporary housing, looking for shelters, and looking for assistance. On any given day, 15,000 people in Pennsylvania are known, any given day, 15,000 are known to be homeless in the streets, including men, women, and children. But 8,000 of that, children. Our perception, the blurred line of homelessness and the ones people cast away, we think it's that parent sleeping on the street with their child. We have this blurred vision of what homelessness looks like. They're dirty, unclean, we need to keep our distance. But that's no longer the case. We expect to see a sign, homeless, please help. We'll work for food, things of that nature. We have to realize that sometimes the person may be asking for help, but are we really trying to help them? Are we hearing what they're saying? Again, I want to define homelessness because, again, it's no longer just living on the street. It's a lack of safe and adequate housing, moving from place to place temporarily, and you can't return to that situation. Now, here is where the lines are blurred because your preconceived notion is battling this new ideology that I'm telling you. But we're going to continue to unblur the lines together as you walk through this with me. We need to find a solution to this epidemic. I'm gonna date myself, as you can see from the lyrics up there. <laughs> In 1989, Phil Collins sang this song. It's just another day for you and me in paradise. 34 years ago. 34 years. And we still have not resolved the homelessness issue, why not? What are we doing incorrectly? Why have we made such little progress? What are we not doing? Believe it or not, no matter how comfortable you are, we are all one paycheck from just being from this situation of homelessness. Don't believe me? Take one paycheck. Discard it, give it away, donate it to a charity, burn it up. But remove it from your funding and let's see how quickly you can recover from that one paycheck. Again, this is what homelessness looks like. It could be your neighborhood mechanic, a high school student, a college professor, your local dentist, believe it or not. These are people that I feed. The employee working in that grocery store that you love to visit, the local Target and things of that nature, the employee that's working there may not be able to afford to purchase items from there. It could be your neighbor, someone sleeping in the library. Homelessness is faceless and it can happen to anyone. Those three letters up there, Y-O-U, because it can happen to you. You may not realize it, but the unhoused and displaced in this community affects not just them, the individual, but society as a whole. You may say, how society? Well, it affects first the individual from the health issues, worsen tendencies of violence, trying to find places to survive and eat. Then it can affect us in society because public services are now increasing and on the rise. As I talked about earlier, this is how you can help and engage. First, see them as human. Don't dehumanize them. Know that they are just like you, people like me and you. Look for them in your community and don't be afraid to talk to them. Say hi and see exactly what they need. You may say, look, I'm already volunteering, I'm donating, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. Great, keep it up. But talk to your local representatives. You put them in office. Let them know they need to help solve this problem in your local community. Start by handing out a bottle of water to someone and then see if the local community can give cases of water once a month to them. You can be a reliable and compassionate advocate for the homeless. It's not a them problem, it's a we problem. So let's unblur the lines. 